All right. Um, so does everyone agree? Like this is what we've been you've been doing your whole life in base ten. All right, can you someone give me a four digit or five digit number? One, one, how many ones is that? Five of them, okay, that's an awesome example. One, two, three, four, five. So this would be one times 10 to the four plus one times 10 to the three. Is this four? Sorry, it's one times, yeah, three plus one times 10 to the square, two plus one times 10 to the one plus one times 10 to the zero. Do you guys all agree with this? Like you guys, this, do you guys agree with all of this? This is nothing new, right? You've been doing this your whole life. This is like how we've done math since like elementary school. Cool, I have a thumbs up. All right, um, so we're gonna continue with this, but here, we'll come back to this problem. But now what, so if we had like one, one, two in base 10, so like this, this number that I write down here, this is the base that the number's in, All right? So this would be one times 10 squared plus one times 10 plus two. But now if I have one, one, two, and this is in base three, I would instead have, so this is the base, right? It's in base three. I would instead have one times three squared plus one times three to the one plus two times three to the zero. Does this make sense? So instead of like where we multiplied by 10 to that power, we're now multiplying by three to that power. All right. Uh, so here's an example we have in the chat, three, four, zero, zero. If we had three, four, zero base five, we would have three times five to the three plus four times five to the two plus zero times five to the one plus zero times five to the zero. All right, and the way you can like know the exponent, right, is you can just count. Like in one, one, two, we knew it was 10 squared because like this was two places, the one was two places from the right. Right, just like in normal math. Does this make sense? Okay, let's try an example. What's one, one, zero, base two? How do you convert this to base 10? What does it equal in base 10? Go ahead and type that in the chat. All right, so we have one right answer. Don't worry, we're gonna go over this um, more. I know it's like pretty new. So one times two to the squared plus one times two plus zero times two to the zero. So this would just be one times four plus one times two, which is just six. Okay, um, here, I want another page. All right, but so how we how we can do this right is if we have if we start off with one one two which is what we had to begin with and this is in base ten so what we normally do is we go one times ten to the squared right to, so this one this corresponds to one times ten to the squared right does everyone agree okay and then we'll, um, and we know it's ten to the two we know that the exponent is two because this one is like two places over. Okay, now let, let me just change this to a three for clarity's sake. Okay, and then here, now we can do this with the three. So now we add three times 10 to the one. This is just like normal math, like base 10, just what you normally do. So three, this goes over here. And then we have zero times 10 to the zero. Oh, sorry, that's not zero, that's two. Ah, uh, someone's in the waiting room. Plus 
2 times 10 to the 0. All right. OK, does everyone understand this part? This is in like base 10. So this is just 100 plus 30 plus 2. That's what it ends up being, right? So that's just 132. So we're just writing 132 a different way to illustrate what we mean. All right, now what happens if we have 132 in base four? Okay, so now it's the same thing as before, right? Like it's one times 10 squared plus three times 10 to the one plus two times 10 to the zero. And then, but so instead of doing like 10 to the 10 squared, we do four squared and four to the one and four to zero. So basically like all of these tens, we're gonna replace with fours. All right, so this becomes one times four squared plus three times four to the one plus two times four to the zero. Does this make sense what we did? Yeah, we have one thumbs up. Okay. Um, all right, and then we can just evaluate this. Okay, so this becomes 16 plus 12 plus two, which is going to be 30. Are you guys all familiar with exponents? If anyone? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a yes. All right. Um, so can, can you guys, here, let's try this problem. 132, 122 base three. What, is it, what does this equal in base 10? But, but 16 plus 12 plus two is not equal to 132. Yeah, so it's not equal to 132. It's equal to 132 in base four, right? So this, this is not 132. This is 132 base four. Up here, we had 132 base 10. All right, so what is 122 base three in base 10?
Okay, so really nice job, guys. So this would just be one times three to the two, right? So we're gonna start with the leftmost digit. So this becomes one times three to the two. This becomes two times three to the one. And this becomes two times three to the zero. Like the last two. And then some of you guys, and three to the zero is like, three to the zero is one, right? Um, it does not equal zero. It's kind of like a common trap. All right, so let's add this up. This is nine plus six plus two, just 17. Okay, 17 is in base 10. If you don't write a base subscript, then you just assume it's in base 10. So that's what humans normally use. And we probably use 10 because we have 10 fingers, but no one really knows. All right. Okay, let's try one more, okay? And even if you guys aren't sure what the answer is, like just send me a question in the chat or let me know what part you're stuck on, right? So let's do 101. Well, let's do 103 base four. What does this equal? In base 10. So we're trying to convert from base four to base 10. Okay, nice job guys. So this would be one times four squared plus zero times four to the one plus three times four to the zero. Okay, um, so four to the squared, right? Four to the, four to the power of two, this is gonna be four times four, right? So in general, like exponents, if you have like a power of two, this means you're gonna multiply it together two times. So that's four times four. Okay, now you have zero. What's four to the one? Four is multiplied to, four to the one is four multiplied together one time. And then you have three, four to the zero is going to be four multiplied together zero times. So this is just one. Okay, so we evaluate this, we get 16 plus zero plus three, it's gonna be, 19. And then, so what we're doing here, right, is we're trying to convert from base four to base 10. So 19 is in base 10. All right, like if we're, if it was still in base four, it would just be one of three base four. What we're doing is we're converting it to base 10. But yeah, we generally don't write like the subscript. So we just, just say 19. All right. Um, let's skip this one. Okay, actually the numbers are kind of big in this one. Okay, we'll just do this one. 
one, one, three, three, base four, and you want to convert this to base 10. And you guys may be wondering like, why do you want to convert stuff to base 10? Well, it's kind of a lot easier to like divide and multiply um, like in base 10. Although it can be done in different bases. We might go over it if we have time at the end. Okay, really nice job guys. You guys are picking this up super fast, I'm impressed. So this becomes one times four to the three plus one times four to the square two plus three times four to the one plus three times four to the zero. So four to the three, this is 64 plus 16 plus three times four, which is 12 plus three times one, just three. And then this just is 95 base 10. All right. If you guys have any questions, feel free to unmute or type in the chat. Okay, otherwise we're gonna go on to this question. Okay, we're gonna skip that because I think you guys are doing really good with the bases. So what base does 27 base B? So we wanna find B such that 27 base B is going to equal 39 base 10. All right, and you're gonna kind of have to apply, like what did you do when you knew what B was to convert it to base 10? Use that to find B.
All right, as a hint, okay, no one has gotten it yet. Um, but as a hint, try converting 27 base B to base 10, right? And the same that equal to 39. None of the answers so far are right. So as a hint, like consider what happens if like, let's say B equals eight or something. All right. So if B is gonna equal eight, then we have 27 base eight. This is two times eight plus seven. This is like, this is the base 10 version. We're converting it to base 10. Two times eight plus seven, just 16 plus seven, 23. All right. But instead, so now we need to try to find what it is because it's not eight. Okay, so for those of you who still haven't gotten it, um, so how about instead of like, think about how you generally convert things, right? But instead of eight, um, we replace eight with like a variable. Okay, let me go over it now. Um, so 27 base B, right? So like what we saw with when B was eight was we did two times eight plus seven, right? And generally when you're converting from like any base, 27 B, if you wanna convert this to base 10, you would do two times B to the one plus seven times B to the zero. Okay, so b to the one is just b, so this is two b. b to the zero is just one, right? So two b plus seven, and we need this to equal 39. So now we need to solve the equation two b plus seven equals 39. And the solution to this would be b is 16. Okay, because two times 16, 32 plus seven is 39. And this is like one of the fun things about competitive math. Like sometimes they just like give you a very basic theorem. Like I, I really just taught you guys how to convert bases and then you have to like apply it in strange ways. So yeah.
and this like can be extended, right? Like generally, if you have something like three, five, seven, nine, base B, this would, in base 10, this would be three times B cubed plus five times B squared plus seven times B plus nine, right? So this like extends. This is like generally how you would do it. Um, but I'm not gonna have any you guys do that today because we don't, because solving like quadratics and cubics is kind of hard. Right. And then the other thing I want to mention was like the digits cannot be greater than the base. Like if you're in base 10, right, you don't think see things like you don't have a digit that is 10. So like you wouldn't have 11, 10, base 10. That does not make sense. You would have like what two? What would you have? Have like 120 instead, base 10. Right. So your digits cannot be bigger than your base. So for example, you can't have like three five in base two. Like you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to have digits that are bigger or equal to two, right? Because instead like five in base two, um, should, this should just become like one, one. If it was a quadratic, would the roots be the answers for what the base would be? Yep, so you would just do the same thing. You would just write the equation and then solve for B, so yes. And I know like not a lot of you guys have learned about solving quadratics yet, which is fine. Um, so we're just not going to do that for today. And you can still understand what about bases without it. And also like quadr solving quadratics is not fun, <laughs> that much fun. So yeah. All right. Do you have any questions about this? Otherwise, you don't know what a quadratic is. It's something with a squared term like this. But don't worry, you'll learn about it in like, what, algebra one, I think. Yeah, so for you guys, maybe like eighth grade, seventh grade. Cool, okay. Okay, back to this problem. This one actually has doesn't have that much to do with other bases, but here we are. So we have Clara, she totaled her scores and she reversed the units digits and the 10 digits of one scored. So for example, she had 12 and then, then she accidentally made it 21, okay? But which of the following might her incorrect sum have differed from the correct one? It's multiple choice, so, you, so like you can just rule out the rest of the answers. All right, so as a hint, like let, so she reversed the units digits and the 10 digits of one score. So that we don't really care about the rest of the other scores, right? Because if you like sum them and then subtract them, you're just gonna like subtract them from each other. So you really only care about that one score that you, that you reversed. So you can let that one score be like A, B, where A is the units, A is the tens digit and B is the units. And then when you reverse it, it's B, A. Right? That's your hit.
Okay, no one has gotten it yet. So keep trying. You can be the first one. Okay, so as a hint, right? What they really want, what they're basically what they're asking is, what is like the which of the following is a possible value of a b minus like b a or b a minus a b either way so absolute value so you want to know like what are the possible values which one of these can be a possible value of a b minus b a remember we're we were talking about bases today right so you know like a b is in base 10 a and b are the digits b a is also in base 10 b and a are the digits okay so what can we write a b base 10 as right this is the same thing as 10a plus b, right? And then ba is also 10b plus a. So now they're asking you for the possible values of this, of 10a plus of this. So go ahead and like try subtracting these. Um, I'm kind of about to go away the whole problem, but like if you go ahead and subtract these 10a minus a, this leaves you of 9a. So this leaves you of 9a minus 9b. Your possible, your possible differences are nine have to be of the form 9a minus 9b. Okay, like final hint, like, wow, notice like what both of these are factors of. Okay, so the answer is A. This is just like nine times A minus B, right? So it has to be, A and B are both integers. So it has to be a multiple of nine which leaves you with 45. Um, but let me like go over the whole solution again, cause I know I've been giving it as like fragmented hints. So first Clara has like a ton of scores, right? And then there's one score which she messes up. So let's say she has scores like one, two, three, whatever. And there's one that she messes up, um, A, B, and B, A, okay? Well, we don't care about like what the rest of the scores are. Because when we subtract them, there's going to cancel out, except for the one that she messed up. So her score has two digits, right? Units and tens. So let's let the units digit be like B and tens digit is A. So the A, B would be her score. So for example, if we had, if her score was 93, wow, it's an A. Okay, she's good at, she's good at whatever class this is. Then A would be nine and B would be three. Okay, does that make sense? What A, B represents? Okay, and now it's she's saying that she reversed it. Oh no. So this would become DA. So we just swap them. So 39, where A is 3 and B is 9. Okay, and then she they want to know the difference. So the possible differences, you would just subtract this and take the absolute value. So A B minus B A. And this, like, I know it's kind of strange because normally this needs multiplication. 
but I'm just going to pretend, like I'm just going to write them like that, but they're digits. So how would the rest of the scores cancel out if she totaled them? Okay, so she sums them all up, right? Like she would sum one, two, three, blah, 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 A, B, and then one, two, three, blah, 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 B, A. And then, um, so then they want to know the difference between the incorrect and correct sum. So then she subtracts them to find the difference. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Wording's a bit confusing. And now we have A, B minus B, A, right? And we learned today that you that this is base 10. So A, B is really just 10A plus B, right? So if A was, if A is three and B is nine, then you would just end up with 39. Um, I need more paper, hang on for a bit. All right, so, so, so we have A, B minus B, A. And we know A is like 10, so AB was really just be 10A plus B. And then BA would just be 10B plus A. Right, so this, so the BA doesn't signify multiplication, it just signifies that B is the first digit, A is the second digit. And then this is 9A, we just evaluate this, minus 9B. So it's 9 times A minus B. All right, so it has to be a multiple of nine because we have a nine here. Um, the only multiple of nine right here is 45. So the answer is 45. And 45 can happen when A is six and B is one, or when A is five and B is zero, right? Then you have 50, 50 and zero, five, or you have 61 and 16 and so on, right? So you have any questions about that? Okay, if not, we're going to very quickly go over how do we convert to, um, from base 10 to another base, all right? So like, say you have some number. Okay, someone give me like a two digit number, not too big, please. 69, thank you, Alyssa. Okay, sorry, um, I already have a number, but we'll do 12 next time. Okay, 69. Now let's say we want to convert this to base B, right? Then we know like we want to find like, oh, like A1 times B to the like large, but then it has to take like something like this. Um, we don't even know if it's like B N. Then we're trying to find like the values of N or we're trying to like put it into this form, right? If this doesn't make sense, it's okay. I'm just trying to like um, explain the background behind this algorithm, I guess, right? And so on. Like if we have 69 and we're trying to convert it into base, let's say we're trying to convert it into base seven. Then we want to know like, okay, like what, what times seven to the cubed plus what times seven to the squared plus what times seven to the one plus what times seven to the zero is going to equal 69, right? So let's do this. First, we need to know like what is the largest exponent that we have to deal with. So we got to find the largest power of the base that fits in the number. So for 69, let's say we have 69 base 10, we're going to try to convert it to base 7. So the largest power. Okay, so 7 squared is 49. Actually, I think I already have an example here. Okay, yes. So we're going to convert from 34 base 10 to base 3. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the largest power of the base that fits in a number. Right? And then we're going to subtract as much of that power as possible while keeping it positive. We're going to decrement the exponent of the base. So here we have 34, base 10. Okay, what's the largest power of 3 that's going to fit into 34? That's 3 to the 3, which is 27. Okay, now step 2, we're going to subtract as much, as much of it as possible. So it fits only one time, right? And that leaves us with 7. Okay, now you decrement the base. So you're left with 3 to the 2, which is 9. How many times does three of the two fit into seven? Zero times, because three of the two is nine. All right, now three of the one. How many times does three of the one fit in seven? Um, if it's two times, seven minus six, which leaves you with one. Then how many times does three of zero fit if it's one time? Okay, 
And then, so once you've done this, you can take like this part. How many times does it fit? One, zero, two, one. And then you find that one times three to the cubed plus zero times three to the squared plus two times three to the zero plus one equals 34. And if this like algorithm is kind of confusing, then maybe it might be easier for you to just like, I don't know, like write. Um, so here, let's, let's look at the next example. What is it 53 base 10 to base four? So let's try to find 53 base 10. Let's convert this to base four. All right. So the first thing we want to know is like, what's the largest exponent that fits in base? What's the largest exponent that can go into base four? Um, largest exponent of four that fits into 53. So anyone know? Two, four to the squared. Yes, you're right. Thank you, Eliza. So four squared is 16. Four cubed would be 64. That's too large. Okay, so we know there's not gonna be anything greater than four squared. So um, this is kind of goes back to the change of base, right? So then if the answer is ABC base four, then this is the same thing as A times four squared plus B times four plus C, right? To convert it back into base 10. So now 53 is gonna be equal to A times four squared plus B times four plus C. You wanna find the values of A, B, and C. And A, B, and C all have to be less than or less than four, right? Because that's like, you can't have a lot, you can't have 10 as a digit in base 10. All right, so now, what, what's the value of A gonna be? Can A be one? No, it cannot be one. If A is gonna be one, right? Then you have like, you're left with like 53 minus 16. You're left with like 47 or I guess 46. I can't do math. Yes, I can. Um, you're left with like 37. You're left with 37. And this has to equal B times four plus C. That's not gonna happen if like B has to be less than four. All right, yes. So A is gonna equal three. If A, A cannot be greater than three, right? Because that would be 64. If A is less than three, like if A is two, then you're left with 53 minus 32 is B times four plus C. But like the maximum value of B is three and the maximum value of C is three. And like this, is, this, this isn't possible. So A has to be three, just like Alyssa said. All right, so now we have 53 is three times four squared plus B times four plus C. So three times four squared is just, uh, I think that's gonna, that's gonna be 48. Okay, B times four plus C. So five is gonna equal B times four plus C. So what is the values of B and C? Perfect. B is one and C is one. Right? And now we found values such that, if, so now we know 53 is three times four squared plus one times four plus one. So 53 in base, 53 base 10, if you convert it to base four, this would be three, one, one, base four. Does that make sense? So basically what we've done is we've, take, we've taken the change of base algorithm um, formula and we're just like working it backwards. So yeah, so largest power of four, this is basically what we did. We, we find that the largest power is 16. We're gonna want to subtract it as many times as possible. So um, we found that if it's three times, like Alyssa said, and we're left with five, and then four fits one time into five, and then it fits one more time. So three, one, one, four is the final answer. Question, will this work with any number with any base? Yeah, it doesn't matter like what the base is. Um, I don't really want to like go and prove it right now, but it's kind of running out of time. But yes, it will. Okay.
So we're going to convert 22 base 10 to base 2. Can we do this with fractions? We, OK, so fractions and bases are basically, uh, I guess you can do with decimals. I'm not sure. I guess if you convert a fraction to a decimal, I'm not sure how you would do bases with fractions. Might be a good question to Google later. Isn't it four to the one fits one time into three? Okay, so go ahead and work on this question. Convert 22 base 10 into two. Okay, um, no one's gone this one yet, but I'll just cover it really quick. It's 22 base 10 to base two. What's the largest multiple of two that's gonna fit? Or not, I, I shouldn't say multiple because it's really power. Yeah, so Rachel and Alyssa, thanks. It's two to the four, 16. All right, and this leaves you with 22, this leaves you with 22. And then if you subtract this, right, you're yeah. left with six. Um, next biggest power is two to the cube, eight. This fits zero times. Two to the squared is gonna fit once. You're left with six minus four, which is two. Okay, and like two is gonna fit one time and you're just left with zero. So this is the answer is one, zero, one one zero. All right, I don't think you guys had time to do that, but we're almost out of time. So I just wanna go over a few things really quickly. Um, so first is uses of bases. So computer science, basically, they have like a bits and electronics. Um, so basically there's like, basically like you can have it on or off. So that creates a lot of powers of two. 
So like your computer, I don't know, it's sometimes you see in the movies, but it's like a bunch of one zero 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 one zero one, like stuff like that, right? So that that would be like that's binary. So computers they operate in a lot of the two bases. So for example, they operate in like binary a lot. Your computer probably does math in this and then converts it back to base 10 to show you. Or yeah, I guess at like a very assembly level. Um, so it's it's used a lot in computer science. You might have seen hex codes, which are used to describe numbers. That's basically in hexadecimal. You also see stuff like, I don't know, E5, F7, and it's like a very beautiful color of blue. So hex codes, and you can also represent certain problems or forms of data with bases. So hopefully this was like a good introduction to bases for you guys. Um, don't worry, you guys will definitely learn more about them in the future. This is just an introduction today. And then, yeah, so next week we're gonna have a guest lecture. We have Mrs. Shack from, she's a calculus teacher at Valley Christian. She grew up in the Bay Area. Um, she graduated from Stanford, worked in industry for a couple years, and then went to be a teacher. So she's gonna be here next week, same time next week. So four to 5 p.m. PST and seven to eight EST, all right? And then she's going to be here next week so you guys can talk to her, ask her any questions. It'll be like last time, if you remember, we had Allison Lamb from MIT. So this time we have her. So make sure to come. We'll send out more information about that, including a flyer in the coming week. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming. I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank everybody. you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.